Okay, so this is the intro and the chorus section of Blackest Magic in Practice. It's relatively straightforward, so I'll just play it slowly. And at the end there, I'm using the tremolo picking technique that Cradle of Filth use a lot. And again, if anyone who's seen the other videos knows that I do this, I basically keep my wrist kind of just above the bridge. I keep the pick, not at an angle like I know a lot of people do, but I like to keep it nice and flat because I just find the tone is a lot better. So I'll do that section. Again, I'm starting on the seventh fret, ninth fret of the A string, seventh fret of the A string, sixth fret of the E string, and seven and nine. Good. Here is up to speed. Like that. Okay. The next bit I want to show you is the kind of chorusy part, kind of the first part of the chorus, which has this kind of hammer on pull off lick and the bass note is always descending. So I'll start off on the eighth fret of the D string and I do a hammer on and a pull off between the eighth fret and the ninth fret. And then I go with my little finger, I go to the eleventh fret of the A string. And there's my bass note there, the A flat note. So it's and then I do a similar thing, but this time the, the high notes are going up and the low notes are descending. So I get this kind of 9 and 11, hammer on and pull off, and then I get to the 9, a G flat note. Then I go up again to the 11 and 13, but this time my bass note is going to be the E note on the 12th fret of E string. So I get this. Then I get like a, a typical kind of sequence, descending sequence, starting off on the 14th fret of the D string, and I kind of come down an A flat minor scale, really. I'll do that again. Here it is, all up to speed. And all that descending sequence is really just 14, 13, and 11. Similar thing on the next string. And then finish with a 14. That's how that section goes. Yeah, all right. So this section is a bridge section. And it changes key to E minor. Or, well, because of a tune in D minor, technically. So this is how it goes. thing all right so what's happening there on the low E string just palm it in some of those low E notes to E5 D sharp 5 back to E5 on the seventh fret sixth fret seventh fret similar thing but then I go to the G5 F sharp 5 back to G5 so the tenth fret ninth fret tenth fret and I do a similar thing but I go up to the uh, G sharp 5 sorry a sharp 5, A5, back to A sharp 5 again. So that's 13, 12, back to 13. Then, we get this little trill bit which goes between the 7th fret and the 10th fret of the E string, my E and G notes. And then I go back a fret between the D sharp and the F sharp notes. Kind of thing. So here's that whole bit. Like that. Okay? Same thing, but it's got a different tail. It goes like this. Just this descending kind of major third pattern. So it's going 6th fret, 
seventh fret on my A and E strings, respectively, and then I just bring it down a fret at a time. Finishing with the open A string and then first fret B string. So here's the whole bridge. So here's the solo section of Blackest Magic in practice. Um, I'll start off with a very similar thing uh, uh, to the intro riff. With the whole, that whole kind of thing, but I do an octave higher. So I'm starting off on the 11th fret of the A string. That's my first thing. Next thing I do, instead of doing this, I'm following my idea, but again, I've gone up and uh, an octave even higher than that. So I'm going up here, starting off on the 16th fret of a D string. Then I go to 16th fret of a B, 14, 16. So get this. So those two sections back to back are like this. So this next section is kind of like an E major nine kind of ascending pattern I do. So I'll start on the 16th fret of the E string, slide up to the 18 and then bring it back all with my little finger. So it goes, then I go to 12, on the B string I go 16 and 12. So I go, then I do a similar pattern but just an octave lower. So that becomes uh, 13, 9, 13, 9 of the G and D strings respectively. So it goes like this. After that, I do a very similar thing, but I go to the 11 and 7 and 11 and 7 of the A and E strings. So this is the whole pattern. And then just to finish that off, I just slide it to the 6 and pull off to the 0. So I go. Like that. Like that. The next section has lots of hammer-ons in it, where I'm going to go basically up a kind of a B major scale. Uh, any of you know, who know your three note string patterns may be familiar with this. Where what I'll do is I go 7, 9, 11. The next one goes 7, 9, 11 as well. The next one goes 8, 9, 11. So I get this pattern that goes up. All with hammer-ons. After that, I come back a string and do a similar pattern, but 7, 9, 11, 8, 9, 11, 8, 9, 11. So all that so far is... And then I just finish up with a B note on the uh, 12th fret of a B string. So... Oh, I forgot to mention, I do actually go back to the D string, do 8, 9, 11, G string, 8, 9, 11 again, so it's the whole thing. Like that. After that, I go up, way up to the 17th fret of the B string, and I bend it up to sound like my 9th fret. And bring it down. Good for 15th fret of the G string. 16 and then hammer on 16 to 18. So After that, the kind of second half of the solo, I'll start off with a very similar thing that I did before. So, starting off on the 13th fret of a G string. Now, here I do this ascending pattern. That is 14, 16, 17 on the B, 14, 16, 18 on the E. And then I finish on the 19. I'll just carry on. Now this is a weird bit where there's a lot of sweep picking going on here. Now what I'm doing, I'll switch for bridge pickup for the, sorry, the neck pickup for this one. Uh, I'm doing an E major three note per string pattern. There's loads of places you can see those on the internet, so I'm not going to waste time breaking it down too much. But we've got the uh, 19, 16, 17, 16. So I'm going to make my way back up. And then I'll do the same again, but replace the 19 with an 18. 
Then I'll do the same again, but I'll go up to 21. And then we go back to the 19 to finish, so I'll get... But then I carry it on, completing the sweep with the 18th fret of the D string, 19th fret of the A string, so I'll get... Like that. That kind of thing. Then I'll do a big, like, March Monty-esque legato run right at the end of it. Where I start from the 14th fret of the E string. That'll be 14, 12, and 11 on both strings. And then I end up on the 13th fret of a G string. And I only pick the first note. That kind of thing. Then I come back up on the B string. Again, I won't break down every single note. Hope I'll just play it slowly so you can see exactly what's going on. I'll play that right. Magic in practice solo. So this is the sweet picking section that happens after Ashok's solo. What it is, I'm just going along with the chords that are underlying it. So the first chord we've got is a G sharp minor chord. Again, position relative because it, it is F sharp minor because of the tuning. So it's G, G sharp minor. The next one is E minor, G sharp minor, and A sharp major. All right. So I'm just going with some. Sweet picking patterns, again, you may have seen them from other playthrough videos where, where other people do things like this. So it's nothing too out of the ordinary. So I'm going to go like this. So that's the first pattern, it's got 12 notes in it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I think I've done too many. Ah. Like that. The next one, the E minor one up here. Then I go back to the G sharp minor one again. And then I go to the A sharp major. This is the pattern. happens after a couple of goes of that, I basically do shift everything up from starting from a 4th fret and now I start on a 9th fret where my C sharp is. So I'll do a similar thing to an A minor pattern, back to C sharp minor, to a D sharp major. So here's the whole lot. I'm Richard Shaw from Cradle of Phil. Thanks for watching the playthrough video of Blackest Magic in Practice from the album Hammer of the Witches out now. Uh, leave any comments or questions in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer them when I can. I'll see you soon.